Raider. Here I am, my first show at Summer Nights Cruises. I love this place, I love this town. That's why I keep coming back and they always have something unique. Now today we are featuring Mopar Mania, which is about to come through the gates. So we're definitely got, gonna get that. But right in front of me, I am looking at a row of Monte Carlos. Now, before we get into the cars, Ron, the president here, what club are you part of, sir? I am part of the first generation Monte Carlo Club, which is located uh, in Pennsylvania. Also, we have club members in the Western United States, the Eastern United States. Today, we have cars here from 16 states in the east of the Mississippi. Okay. Uh, uh, first generation Monte Carlo Club consists of model 70s, 71s, and 72 only. Uh, it was, uh, the club was founded in the year 2000. Wow. Yeah, 23 years ago. This is our 24th, somehow that number, <laughs> this is our 24th Eastern meet. Meet up, okay. And we decided to have it in, uh, close to Somerset, yep. which has turned out real well. Uh, we went to the Mill Springs, Thursday when we went to Mill Springs Civil War uh, Museum, had a wonderful time, it was a great day. Yesterday we went to the greet, uh, meet and greet in Burnside and also some of our members went on the rattlesnake run. How was that? It was fantastic, it was fantastic. And then today we really appreciate uh, Summer Nice Cruise, find us some special parking and they've been real, real nice to us. Well Ron, the cars look fabulous. Thank you. I don't know too much about the Monte Carlos. I know I've always liked the look of them, but first generation is only those two years, 70 up until 72. Seven, for three years. Oh, for three years. Yeah, okay. now they made a, a Super Sport Monte Carlo in 70 and 71. That was the one with the 435? 454. 454. Yes, 454. 1971, General Motors went on strike and did not make many 71 Super Sports. 1919. Wow. Uh, to be exact. Uh, 70 had a few more. 72 did not have any Super Sports. They changed the name of the 72 454 to Custom. To Custom. Okay, yes. there you go. These are an excellent riding car. Uh, plenty of power. They run smooth and uh, are... Uh, I, I love the hood. The whole front end. It's a lot more longer than some of the other classics of its time. It's called a Coke design. You can a see Coke the, design. Co co Coke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the rear end small. The, the front is long. Yep. It, uh, NASCAR really liked them to wear. In, I have in seen the them there. Yep. Yeah. NASCAR liked them because they hugged the road real well. And they look really mean. Oh, uh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're very beautiful cars. Well designed, and uh, we try to preserve and protect these cars. Well, sir, you love these classics. Where does your love begin for the Monte Carlos? I mean, here you are, the president of the club. Oh, I'm not president. You're not president, no, okay. No, I'm a coordinator. Coordinator, and you've been with them for such a long time. What is it about the Monte Carlos that you love so much? Uh, the rarity of them. Uh, we had, a, back in the 1970s, uh, my wife and I had a 1976 Monte Carlo, one of the best riding cars we ever had. And uh, that's, that's one of the reasons. They're very beautiful and they run smooth, and the history of Monte Carlo, they quit and stopped making the Monte Carlos uh, in 2007, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for a comeback someday, hopefully. All right, well, you've got a beautiful one behind you. Thank you. What have you got? It's a 1971 SS454, and I've had this one about eight years. I've done a lot of restoration on it. Uh, so it's an original engine. Oh, the 454, okay. Correct. And this was the top of the range? This was a top of the line car, yes. And eight years ago when you got it, I'm it guessing was, it didn't look like this. Well, it did, I've done quite a bit of restoration on it. It didn't look exactly like this, but it was uh, easy to work with it because it had not been mistreated. Okay. This car came originally out of uh, western Tennessee. And uh, they used to use it as a drag strip car because of the big engine. Of course. So they, they, they trailered it to the drag strip, which is why the body stayed in such good condition. Okay. Well, you found yourself a good one, didn't you? Thank you. <laughs>
I'm loving the wheels now. Are these? Those unicorn? are called rally wheels. Rally That's wheels. what they originally came out with. That was a, a special and a very important and desired wheel back in the 70s, a rally wheel. I'm liking it a lot. I Thank like you. rings and yeah, they definitely stand up. You've that, chosen white. Was it white originally as well? I'm sorry? Was it originally white? Uh, no, this car was not originally white. It's been painted. Okay. Yeah. And let's have a look inside. Now, I'm guessing this is period correct to 71 the way that it was. There's no customization. Pretty close. Yeah, it has the original interior. It's a beautiful dash. Love the wood grain in here as well. very roomy you have a lot of room in here there's quite a bit of room it's considered a five passenger car this one uh, all super sports not all of them but some most super sports came with bucket seats okay now they did have some with bench seats which would actually haul six people but nice. this is a five passenger car this is the one with the bucket seats okay it's similar to uh what they call a chevelle yep in the back the same rear window, same trunk lid. However, when you get past that towards the front, this is a much longer car. Yes, it is. Yep. A little bit heavier car, which uh, holds the road better. Which I guess that's why NASCAR liked it as well, that's why because they, of that's the heavier NASCAR, front end. Exactly. Ah, oh, this is absolutely beautiful. Hi there. How are you, ma'am? All right. How are you? Good. What's your name? Jackie. Jackie. Nice to meet I was you. I getting, getting a video of our um, of all of our cars. Yeah. Yeah. What have you got here, Jackie? Uh, there's a um, burgundy mommy down there on the other end. Yeah. This is the end that's ours. That my husband, that's my husband and I. Uh, we're from, we're, we're the first generation Monte Carlo Club. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm making my way down, so hopefully I'll get some of you members on the film. Yeah, they're, 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 her and her husband are from Tennessee. From Tennessee, first day. We, we have go. them as far away as Florida and Pennsylvania, Arkansas, uh, Illinois, today, uh, Indiana, South Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, everybody's yeah. got a South new. Carolina. Our club is nationwide. Amazing. We got some in Canada and everywhere. Yeah. All yeah. for the love of Monte Carlos. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Exactly. And we, we get to know a real good group of people, too. I can see. Yeah. We're, we're all a family here in our club. Nice, nice. And how long have you been part of the club? We, um, probably about... I don't know. If, I don't know if we've actually been on the um, member since we had the car because he's had it 24 years this month. Wow. So probably about 20 years maybe. Okay. 18 somewhere yeah, along, yeah, along there. Yeah, the club was started yeah. in 2000. Yeah. Nice. We got we got registered we got registered in um, 2006 in Bristol. You've been with the club for a while. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How's it going? Okay. Yeah, I bought me a summer nice cruise suit. Hey, we're matching today, Ron. Yes, ma'am. We both are matching. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm from uh, Kentucky. Okay. I live north of Lexington, so I didn't have to come as far as the rest now, of Now, I love the personalizations you've done here. Exactly. This is a special option that we can order from our club. <laughs> that is very neat. You know, you have so much room in this engine bay. Oh, yeah, you could, if you could you do so much more engine, as well. You could take this out and stand up in there. Okay, yeah. that's the radi radiator? Well, the radiator's right here. But yep. This is where the fan is. Okay. The fan. <clears throat> and this is a, a barrel that kind of directs the air towards the engine. Keep yeah. it cool. I'm thinking it's got so much space you could do so much more things to that engine you could, oh, yeah, you could you, build yeah, on top you, of it oh you could put a lot under there but yeah. most of us like to keep them a little bit more original nice thank you Appreciate well it. this is awesome we're happy to have you here at summer oh, nice cruise and um it's going to be a fun day with all these monte carlos and of course mopar mania as well there's another member he has uh uh one of the most unusual monte carlos which is a convertible Okay. Now, he might be able to tell you about it, but they did not make a, a convertible originally. But some of them have been modified into a convertible. 
Well, so yeah. use the sh top off a of Chevelle or any other A body, a Cutlass, a Skylark, a Le Mans, any other A body. Where is your, Where is it? Right here. Well, yes. I appreciate that, Ron. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice talking to you. Appreciate Same here. Let us be here. This was originally a hard top car. They cut the top out of a Chevelle, grafted it in, and did the car just like General Motors would have done it. And in 1970, actually 69, they actually had plans to build one of these. They had the brochure, shows one of these, anything, but they never built one. All right, so let's just start with the beginning, sir. What's your name? Steve, Steve Redmire. Steve, and what year have you got here? 1970. 1970. So when you got it, it was already a convertible? It was already done, yeah. And the person who did it was obviously not General Motors. Was what? Was not part of General Motors, the person no. who made it into a convertible. No. So did he know that GM was planning? Yes. So he knew about it? Yes, he knew about it. He did it back in 1980, I think, and okay. he had all the brochures and everything from General Motors where they had planned to this and they had the sales brochure and everything, but... They never, Why didn't they, they go through with it? I don't know. I can't tell you that because it, it would have been good. a really popular car if they had. 100%. There's, there's about a dozen of them out there that people have converted. Let's have a look close up. Come on with me, Steve. Well, whoever did it, they did a fabulous job. They did a really nice job. One of our club members actually just uh, repainted this for me last year. I had it repainted. But, and that's uh, a mechanical top? No, it's an electric. It's, it's electric. electric. It's electric too. Yes. Wow. It's electric top and of course it works. Everything works just like it would if General Motors had put it together. And all the underneath side has been stiffened up because once you cut the roof off, you know, then you got to give it some, some structure. Hundred that, That's so. a lot of work involved. And how long have you had it for? I've had it for five years. For five years. And how did you come across this? <laughs> I was sitting in the dentist chair and it was came up on Facebook Marketplace for sale and I had seen pictures of the car before. I hadn't you know, seen the, the, the car. The dentist is never a pleasant visit. <laughs> I personally, I, I, I fear it. <laughs> I hate going to the dentist. So, I mean, you find a nice way to pass the time by looking at the Marketplace just yeah, to take you yeah, away from yeah. that pain. And were you looking specifically or were you just I, came across I collect it? Monte Carlos. I have five of them. So you collect this, them? This one being as special as it is, I wanted I wanted one of these. And what is it about the Monte Carlos that you like so I much? I had one when I was in high school and nice. Just the nostalgia of it. And yep. Now that I got time to mess with them and a few dollars to mess with them, I I collect them so. I, okay. And I have go you... after the rare ones and this 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 is a rare one. What about the engine in this one? What this engine is a was 350, it? 300 horse, four barrel, Rod, Rochester Quadrajet carburetor. That is the original motor for this car. Nice. In fact, everything about this car is original except obviously the top. Yes. <laughs> uh, and do, did all the Monte Carlos have the fans like this? All the, from the factory, they had the big long fan, fan shroud. And like if you look in this one over here, you'll notice he's replaced it with electric fans. Yep. And look at all that room. Look at all that room, yeah. <laughs> You can climb in there and work well, on that Well, that's what thing. Ron was just telling me. You could just actually jump in. Yep, yep. I mean, it's fascinating because um, some of the classics have got such small engine bays, mm -hmm. and then with something like this, I'm, I mean, I, I, I look I look at an engine bay that big, and I'm thinking, wow, you know, you could put some superchargers in there, you could do so much <laughs> other stuff to and it. And there's, there's <laughs> one down there that's got a, a supercharged it has LS okay. motor stuck in it, but yeah, this one this one's all all original, except, of course, the top, but... Beautiful. And were these the wheels that they were... Um... Yeah, these are the Chevy rallies that uh, they would come on this car okay. when they were new. Uh, they also did steel wheels with hubcaps, but uh, a lot of them had the, the Chevy rally wheels Chevy on Chevy rally wheels. Okay, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Something new I've learned about the Monte Carlos today. That's the rims and wheels that they came yeah, the with. the Monte Carlo was the gentleman's muscle car is what they called it back in the day. You know, yeah. The kids would buy the Chevelles and... The, Grown up to buy the Monte Carlos. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's a little bit of history. Well, I appreciate this, Steve. Thank you right, so much. Thank you. Thank you.
behind me, it's Mopar Mania here at Summer Nights Cruises. You gotta love that sound, I know I do. So yeah, there is a lot of dodges, challenges, charges, rare ones like the one we just saw now. So we're gonna get some cool interviews, see some of the latest ones. We've even got a 23, the last of the muscle cars here as well today, I've been told. So yeah, we're gonna get them all here for you, but yeah, I'm loving it. I love my Mopar, so pretty cool. Gotta love some nice cruises. They do it well here. And the awesome thing is this whole show is free. So everybody wanting to get registered and bring their car to get seen, it's absolutely free. Spectators are free. Doesn't get better than this. Alright everybody, you know I love my charges, I love the challenges and here at Mopar Mania something has caught my eye, 1972, bit of a story back to this, very special, let's have a chat with Steve and find out more. Steve, how's it going? I'm doing great, we're having a ball down here at Summer Nights Cruise. Well, I'm happy you're here, you know, everybody was driving in and as soon as I saw this I was like, wow. Thank you. It's absolutely beautiful, everybody just have a look at this, there's that distinct nose. 1972 tell us tell us about your charger uh this was my mother's car brand new um we got this car after the 66 was stolen two times two times yeah not just once but twice the uh, insurance <laughs> paid us out and um she wound up getting this one new in 72 while the other one was stolen so i grew up bouncing around inside this car it was a bench seat small block automatic car now it's uh, a little different. It's very different. We're definitely going to have a look into that. Now, the fact that this was your mother's brand new, mm -hmm. and not just this, but before this, she had two others. Yes. She was a Mopar girl. Yes. Okay, so why does she like this so much? I, my whole family is kind of a Mopar family. My, my dad, who's no longer here, he had a 36 Dodge Coupe that nice. uh, was red with flames, and he used to come here. So, uh, and what is it about the Mopars that you love so much? I mean, the whole family loves it. Your mother's uh, had three. <laughs> more power. More power. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's fun having something a little different. Yes, definitely. And yours is different now. Tell me about your 72. Um, well, like I said, this started off as a small block automatic car. Now it's a 511 Stroker, Tremec 5 speed, Dana 60 rear end. Mm -hmm. um, different suspension, pretty much everything's been changed. Now, we were talking earlier, Steve, come over here to the front with me. We don't see these styles as often. No, the uh, the third gen chargers weren't as popular as the 68, 69, and 70. Everybody knows the General Lee bodies. So it's kind of fun having the ugly duckling now because uh, when I show up places, there's a lot of people that come over and they just don't remember this body style. So at the time, fun. at the time, it might have been an ugly duckling, and some classics <laughs> were like that. Yep. But now, the fact that they are a classic, they're yes. appreciated for what they are. It's fun coming in because you won't see too many of this body style. Exactly, it stands out. Yes. I mean, I mean, I like it. Thank you. That's why I told you that I like it. I love the nose here, the front end. So, how? I mean, you've had it for a while. When did you, when did it become yours officially? My brother had it. He drove it through high school and it was gold with a land out top at that time. I got it from him in pieces. In he pieces. tore it apart in 1986. <laughs> wow. I started it again with primer and fenders and all that in 2004. Okay. It went into the body shop for four years after that. Got changed from gold to the colors that's on it now. And uh, the body man was a friend of the family and it was work on it when you were slow because I didn't have much money then. It's all right because it looks fabulous now. Thank you. The body style is exactly the same. The paint has been changed. Yes. 
Now, before we look at the interiors, let's have a look under that hood. Have a look under the hood? Yes, sir. All right, so tell me again, what was the original motor? This was originally with? a 318 car, automatic. This is starts off as a 400 big block, and it gets bored out 30, and then a stroker kit gets put into it, and it takes it to 511 cubic inches. Nice. So it's it's healthy. It's definitely healthy. I mean, you could do so much because look how much room there is. So that block yes. sits perfectly inside that. Yeah, there's a little room to play in here. Yep. You plan to do anything more to it? Oh, they're never done. They're never done. Yeah. They're never done. <laughs> I mean, you got over 500 cubic inch in here, but still, it's it's not enough because with these mopars, you can really push it. Oh yeah. You can push it. I I almost went Hellcat swap, but I wanted to go old school. Nice. We always appreciate it. And did you do this yourself, the engine? I had the engine built by a friend of mine. Eric, um, and then, but I picked out what was going to be what I wanted done. You knew what you wanted. Yes. You knew what you wanted. And the color, I thought it was plum crazy. No, this is actually a Ford color. Mm -hmm. It's 95 or 96, and it's called ultraviolet metallic. Ultraviolet metallic. I haven't come across it, but I know that the Mopars did have that nice purple. They did have plum there. crazy. Yep. This is a much Slightly darker color. Slightly darker. All right, let's have a look on the inside. Sure. And this has all been restored? These are all original panels. All original. The only thing that's different inside is the center console when I changed it to a Tremec 5-speed. And then obviously these are slightly newer seats. They're out of a 2018 Scat Pack Charger. Nice, I'm but glad But everything you've got... else inside is original panels, factory, the way it came. The iconic pistol shifter is still there, which we yep. love. Can't get rid of that. But look at the dash here, everybody. I mean, this is kept in such a good nick, even though your brother tore it down, he said, mm -hmm. but. It was, it was a well-kept car. Yeah. It just got disassembled a couple times. <laughs> but all the original parts then got put back together. Yes. This is awesome. The other thing that I'm loving is the rims here, Steve. Those are brand new. I had to have the wheel wells tucked a little bit because the tires were going to rub. So those are very new. And the chrome is the original chrome as well? All the trim is original trim, bumpers, all of that. She's a little dirty. We've been driving it hard all weekend. Well, you know, we appreciate seeing the Chargers and the Challengers because last of the muscle cars, 2023. How do you feel about that? It's sad. Yeah. It's evolution. It's going to happen, but it is sad. I like my big power cars, so. Well, people like uh, yourself is gonna keep that alive, hopefully. Oh, absolutely. This is a never sell car. Never sell I car. I worked on this with my dad before he passed away, and this was my mother's car new, so. No, it's not going anywhere. No zeros are gonna change my mind on that. Love hearing that, absolutely love hearing that. And as we can see, as soon as you guys drove in, people have just been stopping. They've been wanting to see this. I'm loving the entire shape of it, everyone. Ugly duckling, maybe at one time, but that is no <laughs> ugly duckling at all. That's a beautiful, Thank beautiful you. swan. <laughs> and how long have you been coming to Summer Nights Cruises? This is only the second time we've been here. Okay. I brought it in 2019, and we made the flyer or whatever for the Summer Nights Cruise. They put it up for this year. My car made that, but it looked a little different this time, so. And um, what was different then? Was it the set, like, old? Different wheels, small engine, automatic. All of this has happened since 2019. Well, you've done Keith proud. He'll be happy. <laughs> He'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you.
love coming across classics like this that have been kept in families for such a long time. But in this case, 1970 Cuda, John, you've had this for how many years? 46 years. 46 years? Yes. You told me this was your first car. Right, first car. Wow, okay, let's, and before we have a look at the car in detail, and this is looking absolutely beautiful, take me back to 46 years ago. Where were you, and how did you come across this? I was 17 years old, <laughs> <laughs> and then my uncle owned the car, and uh, I seen it, and I wanted it, <laughs> and I bought it. <laughs> and it did not look like this 46 no. years ago, no. that's for sure. What did it look like? It was gold and plain hubcaps. Okay. So, and now and dirty is, <laughs> and dirty <laughs> wow 46 years later for starters let's start with the engine here so what have you got 360 cubic inch engine it is sitting beautifully the Thank paint you. job in here the two tones the gray with the red the gray on the engine bay here it's just looking absolutely beautiful you haven't covered everything up which I appreciate, because one, we can see it, right. and two, it's still very neat. Thank you. Now, this has been a full frame of restoration. Yes. Or was it little bit by bit? No, it, it took about four years to restore it, okay. and uh, it's been restored about three years, so about seven years ago. So for the first 40 years, it was in absolute original condition? Close, not not original, no. No, but you had it running. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. You had it running and you were driving it. Yes. Now, now it didn't, uh, not for 40 years. After I got kids, I had to get a bigger vehicle. Yes. And this sat in the garage for it's a long garage. time. Okay. And what made you, what was the driving thing that got you to restore it? I, I just thought it was, it was time. It was time. Yep. Okay. And did you do all of it yourself? No, me and my son. You and your son yes. did it? Yes. Okay, wow. And even the paint job? Yeah, he painted it. He's done an amazing paint job here. It's not just the two-toner, but I love the stripe that is happening here. This is absolutely beautiful. Have you um, won any awards with this yet? Yeah, I've got couple first place trophies here. Best place. show, best of show. I'm not surprised. That's why I had to ask you. And what have you kept original? I mean, the layout on the inside here. Yeah, that's original, the inside. Bench seat, it's not normal. It's, but it was, well, I've seen three in 46 years. It had to. Okay. Now, this is how the dash looked in 1970? Yes. This one is added a tack on there as well. Oh yeah, it's got tack and then gauges down on the bottom. Very nice. How much is the horsepower it's pushing? Uh, you haven't dynoed no. it yet? Okay. I still like you've kept such vintage touches still into it like it's very cool. And how do you know how to restore cars and your son does such a great paint job? Do you guys have a shop? No, wait, I just did it in my garage. <laughs> Go back over there. He's all right. <laughs> you can stay on film if you like. <laughs> we just, I just did it in my own garage. Just to... And what about your son with the paint work that he's done here? Does he have a shop or? He has a shop, but he's not a painter. But he's not a painter? No, he teaches auto mechanics at the... Rock Castle High School. Wow. He's done such a great job here. Love it. Absolutely love it. You've had this for 46 years, your first car. Yes. It's very special. It's not going anyway. No. It's not going I've, anywhere. I've had it longer than I had my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love this because it just shows us there's so many memories in this car. Yes. You've got a lot of memories. And how does it feel like now when you drive it? I enjoy it. You go back to being 17? <laughs> well, not, not, I don't feel like I'm 17. <laughs> oh, love it. Absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, right. sir. Sure.
I'm absolutely loving the classic charges here, everybody. Absolutely loving it. 1970. Brian, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. Love what you've got here. It draws attention. Beautiful black on it. How long have you had it, mate? I've had it for three years. Three years. And what was it like three years ago? Uh, it was in parts and pieces. It was red. It, it needed a lot of work. So. <laughs> Um, okay. The, the body on it was in really good shape. The guy started to do, like, take it all apart to do the work on it and then decided to sell it. So uh, when I purchased it, it was, again, like I said, all in parts and pieces. So I did all the body work, all the paint work on it. and then You did uh, it all yourself? Yeah. I had a little bit of help with my friend that's sitting back there. He did help me with some of the body work. I did all the paint work. You've done a great uh, black. Black you. is hard to do. Very hard. <laughs> and um, It's a love-hate relationship with black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. So tell us about the process, painting it black. Uh, the process? Yep. So um, it had 39 layers of paint on it, so I had to get that down to bare metal first. Wow, 39 layers 39 of different layers. colors? So somebody had painted it red over and over and over again instead of like taking it down to bare metal like they, they should They really have. liked their red. They did, <laughs> and then they kept having like chips or whatever, and they just kept going out over the chips with more paint. So the, the first thing that, that I did was just strip it all down to bare metal and get right down to did it. Did you blast it? Uh, did not blast it. Just sandpaper and, and grit and elbow grease and and that. So, wow, 39 layers. How long did that take you? Um, about three or four days. <laughs> okay, you worked hard and you worked fast yeah. because it would have taken a lot more longer. I mean. Yeah, and then um, after that, uh, did you know got uh, smoothing out all the little dings and dents and had to. Uh, cut off a couple pieces and, and weld in new steel um, and then put just a little bit of filler in it not much just enough to cover like the uh, parts that we had to uh, cut out and weld okay. and then after that uh, epoxy primed it with three or four coats of epoxy primer and then high build prime and then six layers of base coat and then <laughs> it's got eight layers of clear uh, eight layers so of it kind of gives it that depth so and I'm going to ask you a question now here for anybody else. Might be it'll be helpful if you're thinking of painting black because black is beautiful, especially on the muscle cars. It looks great. With your clear, did you wait for it to dry? I did. So okay. um, between layers of clear, I waited a year. So I put like four or five layers of clear on it, and then I color sanded it. Okay. Which kind of took about two or three layers of clear off it. Right. And then I waited a year, and then I re-cleared it with another four or five layers of clear. And then I wound up buffing through another couple, two or three layers. That's of the process. But yeah, that's why I had that to ask you because real slick, real you know, like depth, yeah. like you can kind of reach into it. Oh, it's a very deep black. It's a deep black. Thank you. 1970 Charger. And were you looking for this, or it just fell in your lap? Um, it was going to be a flip, and then once I got it done, I couldn't sell it. <laughs> so um, my wife told me I can't flip cars anymore. So. <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things that caught my attention is I thought it might have been lifted. Tell me about that. You said you put some springs in it. I put um, so I kind of like the old school look where it, it's lifted a little bit more in the back. Um, so I wound up putting in some heavy duty uh, springs, leaf springs and shocks. And then I uh, went with 17s on my wheels instead of the original 15s. Oh, it gives it such a cool look. Thank you. All right, let's have a look under the hood, sir. Under the hood's a little dirty. But... That's all right. We'll let you get away with it since it's looking so shiny on the outside. <laughs> All right, so Brian, talk to me. What was the original motor? Uh, this is actually the original motor. It's a, an original 340 uh, four barrel, and it's actually built to 70 specs. So it's got the, the uh, 10 and a half to one pistons in it. It's got a uh, forge crank, um, and it's been internally balanced. Uh, it's got a mild Hughes cam in it, um, 850 Holly double pumper, and yeah, and it's got about 2,500 miles on the rebuild. Okay, and what's the horsepower? Have you dynoed um, it? It's probably, I've never dynoed it. I'm, if I had to guess, it'd probably be around 350 to 375 horsepower, okay. somewhere around in there. Well, you've had this for three years, which I mean, it kind of tells me that you might be doing some more stuff to this. Oh, absolutely. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you've got a bay that big, you've got room. It's never ending. <laughs> no, it's never ending. You've got room so. to do a lot more to this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm guessing that even with the radiator, you might even be able to push that forward. Um, it'd be kind of difficult, but okay. if anything, I'd put a bigger motor in it. So, 
One thing I was thinking about doing someday is um, maybe modernizing the engine and putting like a Hellcat motor nice. or a Scat Pack motor in it. Yep. But I'm just enjoying it the way it is now, and I, I don't, I don't baby it. I drive it all the time. It doesn't get trailered. I drive it. So nice. I, I drove about 150 miles here today to Somerset to enjoy all the, the Mopar cars and you know all the other cars here. I'm a car guy, but I'm a partial to Mopar. So. Well, this is absolutely brilliant. Let's have a quick look at the interiors, and then we're going to get you to tell us what do you do to keep this looking this good? Because okay. it's going to be hard with black. That, that we know. <laughs> All right, you can hold this, Brian. What, what can you tell me about the interiors? Um, I wound up going with American Muscle uh, Classic Series gauges. Um, the ashtray is open because I put my ignition switch in the ashtray, but eventually that's going to be like a modernized push button, start button push. Can I have a look? Sure. And then I uh, I put a B and M Quicksilver. Oh, there it is. Okay. Love it. Haven't seen that one before. The ignition is inside the ashtray, and the purpose of that is because you're gonna modernize it, make it a switch. Uh, start. Uh, yeah, push button, like a modernized push button. Plus, it's kind of like a theft deterrent type thing too, where yeah. most people think the keys in the column, and um, so. Brian, the, the thing is that these are very popular with thieves. The charges and the challenges, you know, it's a shame because they're beautiful cars, but out of all the cars, they do, they are the ones that get stolen. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm yeah. glad you're thinking about that. So I still got more work to do in the interior. I'm going to replace the door panels at some point and some of the glass, but it's getting there slowly. But otherwise, this is the design, the layout that it would have been in 1970. Yeah, I did. I did replace the steering column too with a chrome tilt steering column and a, and a new steering wheel and then um, I have a BNM Quicksilver uh, shifter too it's an automatic uh, so black is again like a love-hate relationship but I ceramic coated it and uh, by ceramic coating it that helped a lot I'm um, trying to keep it clean, so um, I ceramic coated it, and then I used like a, a, a top coat uh, ceramic sealer on it, and then I just try to keep it dusted down, uh, essentially with the sealer and the uh, just elbow grease. Then if it gets real dirty, I'll just wash it with a spot-free rinse. Safe to assume you've got a few magic dusters inside the back. Yeah, I got uh, <laughs> I got I got one. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, I, I put that on there though, but yeah, yeah. That's an addition you've done, okay. Okay, yeah, the, the, this, is, this is what it takes everybody to have a black car and make it look really good. <laughs> yeah, I have all sorts of nice products in here. <laughs> uh, actually, it looks like I left one of my products at, back at the dealership. But oh, I kind of just go over it with this quite a bit, being black, and then it's soft and it won't scratch it. So, but right now there's still quite a bit of pollen yep. in the air, so I kind of go around this every few hours and just kind of dust it off. But you've got to do it because when it's done, look how nice it looks. Yeah, it definitely makes a difference. Love it, absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Ryan. Oh, thank you. Thank you.